Hey, thank you for tuning in to the Tech High Priest channel. I want to review uh, Fedora 41 today. I have used Fedora for so many years, I think about 15 years now. And uh, in the past four days, I've been playing with Fedora 41, and I want to tell you what I like about it. It's mostly what I like about it. So, first of all, they are using the latest kernel, latest Linux kernel. And uh, you can clearly see here uh, the kernel is the Linux uh, 6.11. That's the color they're using. Uh, that's really awesome. And uh, also, they use GNOME 47. Now, they're using uh, Wayland. Wayland has taken over completely from X11. X11 used to be the old display format. It had its issues. And when Wayland is more secure, uh, it really helps with uh, using the computer. It helps transition windows with no issues. Uh, very, very advanced. So it's all Wayland right now onward. And uh, one of the things that I noticed immediately was when I went to Fedora's website, they said initially that, or they said actually you need two gigs of RAM and then 20 gig of hard drive space to start this virtual machine. However, they recommend you doubling that. Yeah, the hard drive space is correct, but if you use just two gigs of RAM, you are going to get into serious lagging issue. Like I'm running a virtual machine and if I go ahead and I do a free dash H, which is checking the memory, you will see that I have four gigs of RAM and two is already used. So I have uh, this uh, free and uh, this available. Uh, if imagine I had only two gigs of RAM, it would completely be on the swap leg. It would be swapping heavily or actually freezing. So I tried it with less RAM when I started initially, but the, the experience was horrible. So I had to upgrade my RAM. Well, we can also do H top and we can have a more graphical view of what's happening. So we can see we've used 1.62 gigabyte already of the memory we had. Imagine you had only two gigabyte, that would be an issue. Now, for those of you who are still due to Linux, if you want to install HTOP, you can do a DNF install. Remember to add sudo. DNF install HTOP. Hit enter, and then put in your password. That should install it for you. I already have it installed, so I really don't need to install it. It's already installed, correct. That's one, and after that, you can just do edge top to see your system performance. Anyway, let's get back to Fedora 41. Uh, looking at Fedora 41, the next beautiful thing is this terminal. It's a whole new terminal, and uh, I can open more tabs. Uh, let me do a fast fetch here again. And uh, I can click here. And it's going to show me all the different windows of my terminal. This is very beautiful. I like it. And uh, you can also come back to your terminal and you can click on the menu. You can increase the size of the fonts or you can come to preferences and you can literally change the display to whatever you like. But I'm going to keep it to my default. This one, I like this one, the black uh, overlay. The next thing I also want to talk about is the feel. It's just really, really beautiful. I know this is not a technical issue, but it has like this beautiful feel, the, the, the colors. I'm going to go ahead and just change some of these background pictures. Change background. And uh, this is the default background that comes with it. So if you have the light mode, it just makes it like really brighter. And you also have the dark mode if you want to give your eyes some time to rest, right? If you want your eyes to rest a little bit. Let me just go to the white mode and you can come over here, click here where you see the network adapter and you will see the dark style. You can click there and it's going to try to darken it for you to help you with your, with your vision. Okay, I don't have the, the, it's not darkening right now, but let me see if I can go back again to change background. Oh, it's already on dark mode. It's already on dark mode. And if you choose this one, this one actually changes. This is what I wanted actually. When you choose this one, then you come here on dark mode. This is what you get. If you come here and uh, and uh, take out the dark mode, you get this one instead. So it just darkens the background and it takes away some stress from your eyes. Another great thing they did is also they've enabled uh, NVIDIA driver support for secure boots. Uh, 
in the past you could not boot anything in fact during secure boot you cannot boot anything uh any app with any drivers that's not known or that's not authorized that's not been signed uh by os so there is now a support for nvidia and so you can also boot that way now we can also uh while we are still on the display all right click and i'll show you something really cool they've worked so well with wayland on this resolution and the display if i go for example on golf.com just go to golf.com uh look at this website so what happens is if you reduce the display uh to let's say 800 by 600 pixels it's going to automatically adapt so it has a very good way of fitting uh this place it, it was not so before i remember very well uh with the old x11 oh my goodness we just uh scatter the image all over the place so let me try to get our display again we're back to our display and uh I'm gonna go down and try to increase the reduce the resolution appearance. Search for display. Resolution. I'm gonna go down to 100 by 600 pixels. Okay, let me close that. Look at this. It's still very beautiful. In the past, we just have uh, text and pictures all over the place. It's small, but it's beautiful. So I'm gonna close these and go back to my default. Look at this, just perfect. This at 800 by 600 pixel. Nothing looks bad here. So if you have a very old and a very small monitor, uh, Wayland works in such a way that uh, you will not notice any any difference at all. It will still display correctly. So 1920 by 100, that's my default resolution. That's what I prefer. And I'm gonna keep those changes. Another thing they've done great is their app store where they have all their softwares, uh, which their software stores that have hundreds and I would say thousands of uh, collections of softwares that you can download. And so more than ever before, Linux is really getting to the front lines and uh, i'm planning on moving my entire family my children uh to fedora it's free i'll have to pay for licensing and i can literally control the traffic you can use their firewall tables i think i have much control over linux more than windows uh so this software uh section is just wonderful uh you can still search for softwares that you need and you can play with them it's a place to come take a look at you can come and play with them. It's a place to look for. You can, you can look at you can look at this for softwares and try the softwares. The next thing that I'm really impressed is uh, again we still have boxes. Again, if twin it so well, we have boxes for virtualization where you can just open this application they call boxes, and then you choose the virtual machine you want to build. You just choose the image. For example, download iOS. Uh, choose if you want to build a Red Hat. Fedora Silver, and that's it. That's all you have to do. It's gonna spin a virtual machine uh, for the OS you just chose. And last but not the least thing I want to talk about, something technical again, containers. They came with an entire tool set of containers that I really, really like. I love their containers. They have Portman already installed on this uh, uh, virtual machine or on with uh, Fedora 41. You already have Portman running in the background. So let's go to our terminal and take a quick look at that. So you can do a portman. It's just like Docker, guys. No big difference with the command. Instead of Docker PS, just do a portman PS. And then let me try to run a quick uh, container. I'm going to do a portman. Run in the detach mode. Uh, what am I want to run? I want to run uh, dash dash name. You can call it a uh, web one. Let's call it web server one. And I'm going to expose ports for 3000 of my physical machine to that's for 300 on port 3000 to port 80 and the image is http so i'm going to try to launch a container running apache web server i'm going to hit enter bam that's done like in one second it did not even have to uh go look for for stuff or it did not have to 
ask me to install Podman, it's already running. So if I do a IP add, there you go. And I'm gonna open um, my, again, I open it on port 3000. I'm gonna open my browser within this virtual machine, Firefox, and I'm gonna try to visit the local hosts on port 3000. Let me do 10. Oh, shush. 127.0.0.1. Let's look on port 3000. It works. So I was able to spin up a container really quick. It comes to all of these tools. So we have boxes. We have Portman. We have a sleek, beautiful view. We have dark mode and we have bright mode. And uh, we now have Wayland instead of X11. And uh, so on and so forth. So go ahead and try these. And let me know what you like about it. So I have my personal laptop here, an extra laptop. I'm gonna go ahead and deploy uh, this piece of software on it, Fedora 41. So I can use it on the physical device. And I'll let you know my experience on that. Thank you for watching. Hey, please remember to, to, to subscribe to my video and, and to like my video. If you don't do that, I'm gonna send you a basket to send me an offering, okay? I'm gonna ask for an offering if you don't subscribe to my video. Thank you so much. And it was good having you.